Welcome to the Spirit of the Hawk, your Defensa e Justicia weekly update on the SDH Network. I'm Jason Longshore. Let's get caught up on where Defensa e Justicia stands currently. They are preparing this week on Thursday to face Delphine of Ecuador in the third match of the Copa Libertadores group stage. It'll be their first match in a long time. It's going to be very difficult for Hernan Crespo's crew. How did they get to this point? Let's get caught up on the last few months of Defensa y Justicia. They finished in sixth place in the most recent Argentine Super League season. They went undefeated in their last 10 matches of the regular season. Took some time to recover after a second place finish the year before. Sebastian Beccasese, their manager, left for Independiente. He then moved on to Rossing. They had a lot of roster overhaul after that season as well. They had a bunch of players on loan in 2018-19. And it took some time to gel. Hernan Crespo came in in late January. He's had a lot of success with this team. Kind of revitalized uh, Defensa Justicia. The end of the last season, it finished with Boca Juniors winning their 34th league title. They beat Himnasia on the last match day. Atletico Tucumán got a draw with River Plate. That knocked River out of the top spot, gave Boca a very unexpected title. Now, after that was supposed to be the Copa de la Superliga, essentially a mini league where you'd play a lot of matches over a short period of time that would finish with a final and South American spots were on the line. That was postponed, obviously, due to the global pandemic. On April 28th, the Argentine Football Association announced the abandonment of the Copa de la Superliga. All of the 2019-20 season placements were done. Um, International berths were awarded according to the aggregate table of both the Primera División and the Copa de la Superliga. They got one round in, and that was it. So no teams were relegated. Relegation from the first division has been suspended until 2022. Defensa wasn't in any threat of that. They're not going anywhere. Now, there's also been a rebranding of sorts in Argentina. The Superliga was a brand that was created a few years ago to better establish the first division league separate from the AFA. In February of 2020, President Claudio Tapia of the AFA, he said that the Superliga failed in its purpose. So the AFA was going to take over the organization of the first division again, how it used to be. And the president of the Superliga resigned in March. Now, it's been replaced, so it will no longer be the Superliga as the first division. It will be the Liga Profesional de Football that is directly linked to the AFA. Um... It was going to be dissolved at the end of the Copa de la Superliga. Of course, with everything with the pandemic, that was canceled. Everything moved forward faster. So in May of 2020 is when the Liga Profesional de Football branding was introduced by the AFA. The schedule is going to be a calendar year schedule, which is different than it has been. It's going to start in January. There was an intention to have a cup really similar to the Copa de la Superliga, a mini league of sorts. Uh, The Copa de Liga Profesional de Football was going to provide competition from now until the end of the year. Now, that was set to start in late September, according to reports. That's been pushed back to at least mid-October due to issues with the pandemic. So that's where Defensa stands. They haven't played since March. And they go into a competitive match here in a couple of days. This is their first Copa Libertadores campaign. They lost at home in match week one to Santos, 2-1. Their last match that they have played in 2020 was a loss on the road in Paraguay to Olympia on March 11th. They're sitting at the bottom of the group with four matches to play. Delphine of Ecuador is the first opponent on Thursday. They follow that up with their last home match of the group stage against Olympia next Wednesday. Then they're on the road for their last two, so they have to maximize these two home games. Final two are at Delphine on October 1st and at Santos on October 20th. I guess you're hoping maybe Santos has already clinched their spot, maybe clinched winning the group, and they rest everybody on October 20th and get something if you need it. You don't want to leave it to that last match. It's going to be very difficult. Let's get caught up on the squad just a little bit. Um, There's a lot of turnover right now with clubs in Argentina. 
You do have your goalkeeper and captain Ezekiel Unsain back, 25 years old, excellent goalkeeper, one of the top goalkeepers in the Argentine First Division. You've lost a lot of your goal scorers from the last season, though. Juan Martin Lucero was on loan with the team from Tijuana. That loan ended. They sent him over to Velez instead. Fernando Marquez was the next leading scorer. He was out of contract at the end of the year. He's moved to Union. Another player from last season that you guys might know, Ignacio Aliceda. He is now with the Chicago Fire. Um, You have added some pieces, though, and one of the impressive players in the last season that is still with the team now is on a permanent deal is David Martinez, a center back who impressed while he was on loan from River Plate. 22 years old. It was a loan. He did very well, scored a couple of goals, very strong center back. He has now been brought in on a permanent basis. Defensa has brought in quite a few players on loan from River Plate this season. Uh, a lot of younger players. We'll see how many minutes they get, and we'll see where they fit in. But it worked really well with David Martinez last year. They've added a veteran winger in Brian Romero. He has joined the squad on loan from Independiente. Scored five goals in 29 matches for Toto Rojo. We'll see what he can do with Defensa. Uh, Nahuel Gallardo is one of the players on loan from River through June of next year. Uh, Nicolas Leguizamon is on loan from Cologne through the end of 2021. And they brought back a former player, Ciro Rius. He rejoins Defensa after a year at Rosario Central. Who knows what this team looks like? On Thursday, it's a six o'clock kickoff against six o'clock Eastern time, six o'clock Atlanta time against Delphine of Ecuador in the Copa Libertadores match day number three. They have two home games and then two away games to finish out this group stage. There's no real way to know when their next competitive games are going to be outside of the Libertadores. We will keep you posted on a weekly basis as to what's going on. Uh, with Defensa, and we'll, we'll take a look at just in general what's going on in Argentina as well in this update. You can watch the match on Thursday on BN Sports in the United States. You can watch on Fanatis. Uh, they have BN Sports along with a whole lot of other things. If you want to watch the Argentine League when it resumes, Fanatis is going to be the place to go. They're an affiliate partner of soccer down here. You can use the website fntz.co slash soccer down here to subscribe. There is a free trial. You can check it out. Um, That helps the show. If you subscribe, that helps the show even more. It's a great service. I've had it for years. It's how I watch the Argentine First Division. I hope that you enjoy it. If you have not picked it up already, that is one way you can watch the match on Thursday. We'll be back next week ahead of the match on Wednesday to get you set for what that looks like. We'll review this first match And we'll get caught up on any other news that comes up as everything's starting to move pretty quickly out of Argentina. Thank you for listening. Hope you're enjoying all of our team pods. Jarrett will have a new Celtic pod here later this week. John will be back to talk about Swansea. Nick will be making his debut talking about his beloved Milan. And the Spirit of the Hawk will be back next week. Hope you enjoy the match on Thursday.